Walt Disney's Disneyland. When you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. Each week as you enter this timeless land, one of these many worlds will open to you. Frontierland. Tall tales and true from the legendary past. Tomorrowland. Promise of things to come. Adventureland. The wonder world of nature's own realm. Fantasyland. The happiest kingdom of them all. This week from Frontierland, Disneyland the Park and Pecosville. Your host, Walt Disney. For this program, we will bring you the story of Pecos Bill, the rootinest, tootinest, shootinest cowboy to ever ride out of American folklore. In fact, in Disneyland the Park, we dedicated the Golden Horseshoe Dance Hall here in Frontierland to the memory of Pecos Bill and his fabulous exploits. But before we hear the tale of this legendary character of the Old West, we have another story to tell you first. It's the story of Disneyland, the park. Since its opening a comparatively short time ago, over six million people have visited Disneyland, and many have returned to discover new adventures and further expansion. We've received many letters asking us to show this progress. And so we feel it timely to bring you that story now. Before Disneyland became this active, thriving domain, we had seemingly endless problems to solve, many of them entirely new to us. For Tomorrowland, a great deal of scientific research was required. And so we called upon leading scientists and engineers to help us achieve this factual realm of the future. In Frontierland, the wide open spaces of the Old West called for a painted desert, rock formations, and winding pioneer trails. Nature spent endless ages to create her geological wonders, but we had to do our job in a few months. To accommodate Frontierland's 150 ton stern wheeler, the Mark Twain, we had to dig this big river. To provide authentic settings and keep Disneyland perpetually green, thousands of full-grown trees and foliage were brought here from all parts of the world. Well, our dream of Disneyland became this reality exactly one year and a day from the time we first broke ground. But even to us, who were closely associated with its daily progress, it's difficult to recall that this was once a quiet, rural orange grove. So let's turn back the calendar to the days of its very beginning. After clearing these 160 acres, the job of contouring began. Scooping out over two miles of lakes and rivers paid big dividends in valuable dirt enough for Disneyland's rolling hills and mountains. Well, it wasn't long before the first of Adventureland's jungle began to arrive from many directions and faraway places. Each tree and plant had a reserved spot and was made to feel at home in specially treated soil. Where the Congo would eventually meet the Nile, sculptors created rocks for a waterfall. And to keep our rivers from running away, we sealed their beds with a clay and liquid cement mixture. 
Upriver at the Adventureland boat dock, our workmen used a Tahitian technique to thatch a grass roof. Over at the Gay 90 Main Street area, construction progressed by faster methods than those of 60 years ago. To make sure we would keep our date with a deadline, over 2,000 craftsmen were employed during peak construction periods. Behind these old-fashioned facades, there is a structurally engineered framework of steel. Sleeping Beauty's legendary castle landmarks the site of Fantasyland. This medieval masterpiece is architecturally correct in every detail. In constructing Frontierland's log fort, the accent was also on authenticity. Only one kind of tool was used, a pioneer's axe. Nearby, descendants of America's first do-it-yourselfers build an Indian longhouse. They apply birch bark strips in the same manner as did their forefathers centuries ago. Cutting out the windows soon puts a finishing touch on the job. To provide transportation throughout Disneyland, the almost forgotten art of wagon making was revived. We built Conestoga wagons, buggies, buckboards, surreys, and stagecoaches. To pull them meant the training of many horses. These small horses were specially bred to fit our scaled down vehicles. In Fantasyland, another kind of steed becomes the most important part of King Arthur's carousel. We conducted a long search to round up and recondition 72 of these authentic jumpers. Only in Fantasyland would shipbuilders build a restaurant. A more seaworthy craft, the Mark Twain, was being assembled in Frontierland's dry dock. Well-coordinated planning ensured a perfect fit for all parts. Well, after many hectic yet happy months of hard work, we reached the final stages of assembling, touching up, installing, and last minute testing. The driving of the last spike was both symbolic and timely. And so Disneyland emerged from a dream into a reality. It seemed fitting that the place of honor should be reserved for Mickey Mouse, the little fellow who made Disneyland possible. But let's join the crowds at the beginning of Main Street, USA. Here is a typical small town of the 1890s, completely authentic in every aspect, yet it's brand new, spick and span, the only one of its kind in existence today. Main Street is more than a show place. It's an active community with a fire department, town hall, police force, and a bank. It even publishes its own newspaper. Many organizations are welcomed here, and the Horseless Carriage Club finds Main Street a perfect setting for an outing in their antique cars. Easter parade here is in keeping with the pace and fashions of half a century ago. Even Dobbin's noggin is gussied up for the occasion. This double-decker bus is about ready to leave, so let's climb aboard and see the sights along Main Street. Old-time theater features six silent movies with old-time piano accompaniment. From this high vantage point, we get a good view of the gingerbread architecture of the Victorian period. Every detail has been faithfully reproduced. 
but let's transfer to a lower level and continue on a horse-drawn streetcar. And incidentally, Disneyland's horses never had it so good. Each one works only four hours a day. For those who prefer to ride in a surrey with a fringe on top, here's one now. If you've ever wondered what a coach dog sees, this might give you some idea. At the end of Main Street is the plaza, the hub of Disneyland. Around this focal point are the entrances to all the different and distinctive lands. Here, visitors can rest in the shade and enjoy the passing scene. Or catch 40 winks while on the move. In Disneyland, all lost parents are soon returned to their children. Just beyond the plaza stands Sleeping Beauty's castle. This is the entrance to Fantasyland the happiest kingdom of them all. Within the castle's winding corridors, medieval rooms, and its dungeon, a new adventure awaits visitors. For here, dramatic scenes from the story of Sleeping Beauty are brought to life. The castle moat is ideal for swans, but sometimes boats disturb their dignity. Model club members find Disneyland's waterways interesting proving grounds for their craft. These scale models are maneuvered by remote control. Across the plaza from Fantasyland is the entrance to Adventureland. It leads us to an exciting river journey through mysterious tropical jungles. From this last outpost of civilization, explorers' launches push off into the unknown. On this trip, Junior is leading the way, guided by its model club skipper. The unexpected awaits us at every bend of the river. has always been our primary goal, and these hippos are typical examples of the skill of our craftsmen. This is the busiest jungle in the world. In fact, as many as 20,000 people a day have enjoyed its wonders and excitement. Like any jungle, Adventureland is expanding and growing. We're adding huge carnivorous plants and giant tropical butterflies. Gorillas, water buffalo, and other big game will prowl through the dense undergrowth. And to the beat of tom-toms, savages will do their war dances. From Adventureland's uncivilized jungles, it's but a few steps across the plaza to Tomorrowland, where man's dreams of the future become the realities of today. At Tomorrowland's entrance, this world clock shows the exact time for any place on Earth. In this miniature airdrome, planes of the future are tested by expert model builders. One of Tomorrowland's latest attractions is the Astro Jet Flight. And once you take off, you can pilot your ship through all the thrilling maneuvers of a real jet. With a little practice, the old game of follow the leader can be played in this modern manner. Autopia is the safest of all superhighways. Here, future motorists learn good driving habits and have fun doing it. 
Autopia is always on the move. In fact, the mileage already traveled by these little cars equals 21 trips around the world. This Tomorrowland adventure is a favorite with all youngsters. One of our recent developments is the Skyway. It's a pleasant ride between Tomorrowland and Fantasyland and offers a bird's eye view of all the realms. Leaving the world of the future, Sky Riders glide into an enchanted land of make-believe. Passing over Captain Hook's pirate ship recalls a view often seen by Peter Pan. At the Mad Hatter's tea party, the whole family can get in the world. Or they can experience a flight of fancy on Dumbo, the little flying elephant. The Skyway was built especially for us in Switzerland. And so we designed this Swiss chalet for its Fantasyland terminal. For the Skyway's inauguration festivities, Swiss alpine dancers added color and gaiety to the happy occasion. Monstro the Whale is another newcomer to Fantasyland, and through his cavernous jaws, obligingly held open, we float into a new adventure. Fantasyland's miniature world, where fairy tales come true. This is Storybook Land, and the three little pigs are permanent residents here. These are their houses, the one of straw, the one of sticks, and of course, the one of wolf-proof bricks. Mr. Water Rat's Riverbank House Mr. Toad's mansion and Molly's diggings recalls the story of Wind in the Willows. Cinderella's castle with its tower clock stopped at the hour of midnight overlooks the forest cottage of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Casey Jr. also travels through storybook land and offers another view of this enchanted world. This miniature English oak shades the house of the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. All these dwarf trees and miniature flowers were carefully selected to maintain exact scale in storybook land's many settings. Up ahead lies the Swiss Italian Alps and Pinocchio's village. Here in Geppetto's toy shop, Pinocchio first came to life. From the land of fantasy, it's but a short walk into frontier land and our country's historic past. Here is a land of log forts and western towns, of pioneer trails and cowboys and Indians. Back in those days, the law of the six-shooter kept the peace and sometimes disturbed it. Square dance clubs find Frontierland an ideal setting for their outings, and they're greeted in typical Western fashion. Now swing them high and swing them low, swing that gal in calico. It's a heel and toe and away you go, your new gal and my new bow. Now the gents to the center and back to the bar, gals to the center with a Texas star. Now the gals sweep out and the gents sweep in and form the Texas star again. Now 
Here we go with the old mess wagon. It's the hind wheel broke and the axle dragon. Rope your cow and brand your cow. Turn your honey about once and a half. Now the hub flies out and the rim flies in. Turn the old wagon wheel again. The covered wagons and stagecoaches are leaving for trips across the painted desert. There's even a mule train ride for these hardier pioneers. Another way to see the painted desert is from the mine train, which loads at Rainbow Ridge. This narrow gauge railway is one of Frontierland's latest attractions. This natural bridge solves the desert traffic problem nicely. Here's a hitchhiker that no one wants to pick up. Even the seven dwarfs are represented among these prickly plants. Nature never loses her sense of balance here at Disneyland. Well, not completely, that is. The long shortcut through rainbow caverns is a breathtaking sight. Here, brilliantly colored cascades, waterfalls, and streams gush from the subterranean walls. to the Disneyland Railway is but a short distance. These two iron horses are exact replicas of the old timers of a century ago. The Disneyland Railroad is a sightseer's and camera fan's dream for it circles the entire perimeter of Disneyland, but will ride the rails just long enough to see a panorama of Frontierland. village is a permanent and popular attraction. Braves from many tribes are represented here. This is the Drum and Feather Club, here for their traditional ceremonies. These tribal dances and centuries-old customs have been handed down from generation to generation. Such groups help fulfill the purpose for which Frontierland was intended, the perpetuation of our country's heritage. Frontierland's Big River is the Mark Twain. This romantic stern wheeler is brand new, the only one of her kind to be built in the last 60 years. To date, she has carried over two million passengers. Around every bend in the river, dramatic scenes of pioneer days come into view. This settler's cabin flames continuously, but it never burns down and this lifelike warrior greets all boats. Like her ancestors, this squaw works ceaselessly from morning till night. Even the wildlife here reacts naturally and on cue at the approach of sightseers. The old 
suspension bridge on Tom Sawyer's legendary island is our first sign of civilization. And as we pass Huck Finn's fishing hole, we return to the teeming gay activity of Frontierland's river town. folklore comes the large and important part of our country's heritage. Each region has its favorite champion, and the exploits of these genial giants have been handed down from generation to generation. I remember as a youngster hearing old-timers spin yarns about some of these fabulous heroes, and I was too impressed to care where fact overlapped fiction. Being storytellers ourselves, we've always wanted to portray the deeds of such colorful characters as Johnny Appleseed, Davy Crockett, Paul Bunyan, and many others. One of the most spectacular of the legendary heroes of the Western frontier was Pecos Bill, the champion cowboy of all time. So now, let's head for the wide open spaces and hear the story of Pecos Bill as sung and told by Roy Rogers and the Sons of the Pioneers. 